Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 where I'm continuing design of a hypersonic liner and I got many suggestions from viewers and I'll try and implement them but there was one where people suggested that the ramjets were simply not getting enough uh, intake air and so I would like to dispel this notion that we could just turn the turbojets off and then the ramjets would get all the air and then the prop requirement would be met. Um, uh, there was also a suggestion to put these back with the shock cone intake. So let me do that first. So we're putting the jets back over here. Come on, alt. Alt is being held. Yes. Okay. And we'll put the ramjets over here. And we won't change the wing aspect ratio right now, um, though I will do that. And the reason why the wing was like this, by the way, is because I know very well that this can get off the ground very easily. And also that we could swap the engines around and change different engine configurations and this will still be relatively good. So it was just a very stable configuration. And it's, it, the wing isn't as big as you might think it is. It, it's still pretty big. Uh, the canards should be probably swept back. But if you take a look at the leading edge curve here, and then continue it on, I mean, maybe the wingtip here is clipping that. Uh, actually, I think it, it goes along this shock cone here, and then it'll clip this wingtip here. So if we could just uh, cut that end off, I think actually uh, the entire wing would fit into the shock cone as delineated by the nose here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a little bit deceptive in some of the views I did. It's not actually that big. It's pretty big, though, and certainly more than we need. And more, the more important thing is I would like to cut down on the, on the area that's hitting the atmosphere to reduce drag. But we could sweep this canard a little bit or move it further back, and that would help, too. Also, just moving the wing back would avoid the clipping on the outer edge when it comes to shock, uh, what you got, the... Um, sonic cone here so uh yeah about there ish anyway but we'll fix that later we know that we can get to mach 4.7 like this let's see if switching the engines around or shutting down the jets makes a difference okay so we'll just take off and actually i don't need sas on with that autopilot module manager thing and um, i'll catch up with you at altitude to see how it goes Oh, there's a seam. Come on, beat the seam. Okay. There was a question about how I beat the runway seams in this version, and basically I try and make sure that my wheels are off the ground before then. That's, uh, that's a good way to do it. But there's a definite bad seam right there. You can even see it now. Also, this uh, particular plan with this wing seems to be very stable at supersonic speeds too. Even though I'm sort of forcing it out. Okay, let's level off here. We'll let the jets do what they can first and then we'll add the ram jets in. And then once the ram jets get up to the same amount of thrust that the jets have, we'll switch. Okay, well, uh, just on the jets, you can see we, we're getting to a Mach 4-ish. Okay, let's add the Ram jets. And we'll have both of them up. So again, it says prop requirement met 0% for some reason here. We're pretty much reaching our max speed. Uh, we're going to be going at Mach 4.7. It doesn't look like the ramjet is going to catch up to the... Well, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if we go a little bit higher. 
Well, no, the ramjet thrust is tailing off faster now. Let's see if we can get to a higher Mach number in a dive. Okay, now that's picking up. Okay, well, it's crossed over. I think somebody said 300 kilonewtons, so we'll wait until it gets to 300. Uh, let's let's level off a bit here. Okay, let's switch. Okay. Now it was already increasing in thrust, but now you can see I turned off the turbojets, and now it's decreasing in thrust because I've, I'm leveling off and we're reducing our Mach number here. And so, and uh, once again, the prop requirement met is still zero percent without the jets and with just the uh, ramjets and the ramjets aren't able to hold on to the velocity remember that the jets themselves were able to bring us to Mach 4 but the ramjets alone can't keep us going Let, let's see if they can at a higher altitude but as we go to a higher altitude the thrust is still tailing off and it's not gonna be able to hold on here So I don't know, I mean, maybe along the way there were some changes made to this CR2 ramjet. This was added by Advanced Jet Engines. It's based on a stock part, but Advanced Jet Engines is the one that adds the configuration for this particular part. And yeah, we're not going to get much good out of this. I suppose let's see the flight data. Well, yeah, that's not much estimated endurance, is it? I mean, just in case it so happened to be accidentally efficient, but no. It's not as bad as that's indicating, but it's still pretty bad. So we've got a bit of a problem with the ramjet here, and it's not operating the way I expect it to, even with the jets off. It's possible that we need a larger intake, but normally the way things work is that the intakes are the same size as the engines themselves. Okay, anyway, uh, with that test done, let me make some changes. Alright, so I've swept the canards back a bit and also moved them physically back. And also shortened the wing up. And... I think that well, we'll see how that goes and whether we still have uh, excess lift or not. But keep in mind that as we get into the thinner parts of the atmosphere, uh, having uh, very little wing means that we also uh, don't we need to have a high angle of attack. So that's not good. We could increase the wing um, cord. You know the I don't know what you want to call it except for cord, but uh, we could make it more of a delta wing but that will change the basic plan a bit. And you'll note something good about this basic idea is that the center of mass doesn't change very much during the flight. The red one is where it ends up after all the fuel is consumed and it stays in front of the center of lift. And also I don't have fuel in this, these engine pods right now, well only a tiny little bit. And if we want to we can actually fill those up and you'll see that the filling those up the center of mass does not go uh, behind the center of lift. It does change a bit though. But uh, during the flight it'll just move back to where it was before too. So yeah, there there are options here. I also reduced the wing mass a little bit. This mass strength multiplier I put to 0.8 in the hope of getting a higher thrust to weight ratio as we get to uh, you know pushing Mach 5. We'll see if that helps or not. I haven't changed the intake yet, so we've made some changes, uh, all of which are designed to reduce drag, and we will see how those work before we make further changes. But yeah, I mean, we could go to a full delta wing, that's another option, but um, there's a lot of delta wings out there. Uh, I could reduce the wing tip here and sort of make it more of a delta like that, but we'll see how this works first and then on the side. Okay, so here we go, throttle up and ignition okay and whoop, there was a bump there 
Uh, oh, I, I don't think I can rotate. Okay, maybe we can get up here. Okay, just off the ground before that bump. Definitely less lift. Uh, before we used to be able to get off the ground at 80 meters per second if I rotated right. This time didn't seem like we could get off the ground before 100 meters per second, which is pretty fast. Um, not unheard of. Okay, well, one test will be how fast the jets themselves can push us. Uh, last time we saw they were easily able to push us beyond Mach 4. So let's see how fast they can push us now. I say jets, but the SR-71 engines are sort of peculiar. It's also interesting, these ramjets, they seem to have a current throttle of 1% even when off. Why? I don't understand that. One of numerous numbers I don't understand when it comes to that engine. Well, of Mach 4, and increasing, but not much. Let's go with the ramjets. Well, Mach 4.8. Ready to turn off the jets. Uh, Mach number is going down now. The uh, ramjet thrust is increasing. These are serious G-forces, just minor turns produce. Well, so we're here, stable at uh, 4.7 Mach number, 1,385 meters per second, but we're running out of fuel at a prodigious rate. And if we, I mean, it doesn't look like we're passing Mach 5 this time. Uh, unless I put it into a more severe dive, but eventually the ramjet will just not be operating properly then. So, let me turn off the jets just to verify that again. And indeed, the thrust goes down, no additional air requirement, and our velocity is going down. Actually, interesting. The ones that had the indicator for engine internal temperature are the ramjets. The, there was no engine indicator on the SR-71 engines, was there? I want to try something else. Let me uh, turn off these intakes and see if the, the shotgun intakes are working properly. So I'm going to turn back the jets. And the purpose is to verify these are closed. And indeed, the shotgun intakes are feeding air, so it's not that these aren't providing any air, they are. And conversely, let me open these intakes. They might, it might just not be enough intake area. I wonder why there's always two intake. Okay, well, that's interesting. That definitely not enough intake area to sustain the ramjets there. We have enough intake area for the SR-71 engines, but just barely. You saw that um, evident problems keeping that up uh, for this engine. So with the shotgun intakes, we don't really have enough air. Well, I mean, without the shotgun intakes, we really don't have enough air with just, just these. But that's not entirely a surprise. But okay, let's make our next change and attempt to increase the air that we are receiving, and maybe that'll help. Alright, it is worthwhile at this point to get a sense of scale, I think. And yeah, I, I can continue to sweep the wings back, but I don't think that that's our problem right now. Uh, as you saw, shortening the wings up and try and fit them in didn't really reduce the drag to the point where we could push Mach 5. Something else was causing the problem. So we'll we'll do the adjustments to the wings later. I, I do think that we could make various different wing designs that will still work. But that I don't think that's the priority here. But I wanted to give a sense of scale because we are using basically for most of the flight until we light the ramjets 
two SR-71 engines, which is the same amount of thrust that the SR-71 had. And so the length of the SR-71 was 32 meters. Our length is 30.2. And uh, the wingspan of the SR-71 was about 17 meters. Ours is a 16.7. So you can see that uh, this way around, we're, we're basically the same size, physically. Um, so there is that, but uh, the SR-71 wings were swept back a little bit more. The wing tips, instead of having uh, this breadth, actually came to a point, so it'd be relatively easy. Basically, the SR-71 wing would look uh, more, more like that-ish, and then thicker inside. So it'll be uh, thinner on the outside, thicker on the inside, and that's basically it. As far as mass, though, and uh, that's the interesting part here and the reason why we're going faster than Mach 3. Well, one reason why we're going faster than Mach 3. Another reason is we don't uh, have to worry so much about the material issues of the structure. Uh, but the empty weight of the SR-71 was 30.6 tons. Ours is 22.4, so we're about 8 tons lighter. And the maximum takeoff weight of the SR-71 was 78 tons. Uh, our maximum takeoff weight is actually, with these filled, uh, 58 tons. So we're talking about 20 tons lighter, uh, fully fueled up. Um, the normal loaded weight was 69 tons for the SR-71, and we'll call it 41 tons here. So we are lighter overall. And... The shock cone intakes, though, on the SS-71 don't look that much bigger. I've scaled these up, okay? So they were 1.25, and I've got, gone to 1.7. And that's almost doubled the area, so hopefully that'll make the difference. Also, hopefully doing this doesn't mess anything up. We'll see. Anyway, but that's the one major, major change that I've done so far. Let's uh, go outside and try that out. Okay, in full disclosure, when I came outside, the plane did one of those really big bounces, but it managed to land on its feet instead of blowing anything up, so we're good. And then, yeah, I don't know why the ramjets are, ooh, sort of, the way I've got them right now, the wing is sort of clipping inside. We'll see if that's okay. But th they always seem lit, and, and they always say current throttle 1%, and I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or whether that's indicative of something else going wrong. Let's just have these out for now. There's one bump right there. Uh, no, uh, there's the other bump. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. No, no, come on. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually, if you take a look at the SR-71's wing, there are a lot of interesting things, like on the side of the engine nacelles right here, this little curved bit, and then the rest of the wing there. It's got more of a shape like this and like this. It's actually sort of tapered up. And of course, the vertical stabilizer is on the engine nacelles and not on the main body here. Though I've noticed that firm airspace tends to prefer it on the body than on the engine nacelles and tilted in like that. I think the SR-71's vertical stabilizer is a bit too small. Vertical stabilizers are a bit too small for the speeds we're talking about. The faster you go, the more vertical stabilizer gets important until, of course, you're out of the atmosphere. If you're going about Mach 5, Mach 6, it's just when you really need a lot of vertical stabilizer. And like the X-15, you'll know that it actually has two. It's got the uh, upper one and then the ventral one at the bottom. And then it has to dump the ventral one in order to land. We're accelerating, but it doesn't seem quite as vigorous as before. I'm worried that, yes, we have engine nacelles, big engine nacelles, and big intakes but that also means larger surface area, right? It's tough, and there's a reason why intakes like these exist. It's to reduce the surface area. 
Anyway, let's see if these um, J58 engines can get us to Mach 4 as before. If they can, then that's okay. Alright, that seems nominal. Let's get the ramjets on. And let's keep an uh, eye on what is actually overheating. Right? So, these indicators are on the ramjets and not the J58s. Which is interesting. The ramjets still say prop requirement met 0%, but I think they're getting more thrust now. than they did at this speed before, maybe. Annoyingly, their thrust is going down, but that's probably because we're going up into thinner atmosphere. Let's try and level out here. Well, 4.8 again. A mild dive here. I'm not going to be accelerating fast enough. Let's try and add more dive into it and try and push it up beyond Mach 5. Nope, it's going down on the Mach number now. Let's try and go it up into a thinner part of the atmosphere for a bit and then dive down. Okay, we are now pretty darn high. Let's see what angle of attack we need to get ourselves leveled out at this altitude. Mm, I don't think that's going to happen, actually. Since it looks like we're going past an angle of attack of 10 degrees, means that there's so much airflow hitting us that we'll constantly slow down and as we slow down we lose lift as well requiring more angle of attack so alright let's uh, try a dive and try and make uh, Mach 5 no but it's pretty darn consistent about flattening out right there actually Now this is look like we're looking like we're doing re-entry or something. Yeah, I, I don't see. Well, let me turn off the jets again. Let's level out at uh, and around here. Try and keep it to Mach 4.5, and then turn off the jets. Maybe a little bit lower because right here the ram jets seem to have trouble getting enough thrust. Still peculiar that it's the ramjet swift uh, heating indicator. Okay, trying to level out here at 19 kilometers and pass 4.8 on the Mach number. There we go. Maybe I should just be patient, but I don't think it's going to go up that fast. And of course, we're running out of fuel here. Okay, um, yep, let's turn off the jets and see what happens. Right, no, uh, that, that sure doesn't help uh, the ramjet. That's that ramjet, maybe we should just take a look. Yeah, it's uh, symmetrical, obviously, otherwise we'd be having all sorts of trouble. But just as a test. Hmm. Well, so that's the situation there. Let me uh, switch it up and only go with the SR-71 engines and see how fast we get. So, I mean, you can sort of see the delta shape we are currently going with here. So we've got an area of 1.66 on these intakes. Maybe I should just... I, I don't recall that there was any indication of what area the ramjet needed, though. On most of the advanced jet engines intakes, they say what area it needs. But I think the ramjets did not. But let me double check in the VAB. Alright, SBH. It looks like uh, with the SR-71 engines alone, we can sustain Mach 4.4 like this. 
and that's while carrying the ramjet engines and they're not overheating so if we dump the ramjet engines we should be able to go a little bit faster or we would be able to carry more fuel in exchange for them currently we have one third of a tank uh, unfortunately our estimated range is only 900 kilometers if we go higher that should improve by quite a lot okay um, let's see what we can see in the SPH about those ramjet engines. Well, as it says, a fictional ramjet engine, a uh, fictional CR2 ramjet, works best when faster than Mach 2. It doesn't work much at all faster than Mach 2 right now. And yeah, uh, it says area, I guess that's the required area, 0.36. Well, we, we've got an area here of 1.66. So that's should be more than it needs yeah not too sure what's going on there power is not going to be an issue and I, I, I think it produces rather than drains but it doesn't matter we're carrying plenty um, if we take a look at the J58 here this doesn't this actually doesn't say area this says intake air which is annoying. I wish everything was consistent about what it was asking for, but it doesn't matter. We know that when these turn off, it doesn't supply more air to the ramjets. Here it says need area 0.27, which is even less. And again, we've got way more than that. Okay, well, I don't know. Um, considering the, I mean, it is a fairly light aircraft as it is. I mean, if you take a look at it against DSR-71. I had mentioned that maybe I should make it a little bit pointier instead of having this kind of cockpit. But that'll take some radical redesigning. Uh, let's, let's change the wing up just as the last thing. Let's uh, make it a little bit more like the SR-71 wing. So we're going to increase the root size. We're going to decrease the wing tip. And we're going to increase the sweep back. And I'll do even more of that. And one other possible modification is removing the canard. But I'm not too sure about that. Now, it says that it only needs that little area. Maybe maybe we can shrink this back down because you know reduce the uh, forward surface area so my guess is that this is not going to work uh, or help and that I'm going to have to redo the entire design and use like mock uh, not mock mark one type things pointy ones or like the Concorde cockpit use that instead and just make a smaller version though you know that's wider than it probably needs to be yeah the effect of the canards isn't going to be all, all that great right now and we have to move this back which is not great for the positioning of those jets We'd probably want some sort of structural part there to smooth that out. Uh, let's let's just do that. The problem with that is that also moves the center of mass back. That's a little bit too tight on those center of mass, center of lift things. Mm. Well, I guess we could just remove these four canards and see what happens. Just go with a very very traditional sort of design, not much pitch authority though. But that'll move everything back there, which may be better. Let's see, let's call this Peregrine 6. Okay, so last try before I need some additional suggestions and possibly a change of body structure entirely. Okay, throttle is up, and here we go. There's no guarantee we're going to beat the bump this time. We don't have much wing. We do have a lifting body. Now, do 
there is a bump. I'm pulling up. Uh, oh crud. Uh, Alright, we're up. <laughs> Jeez. Going like more than 300 knots there. Yeah, this... This does not have much lift. And it was sort of a lucky bounce there that got us up. More than lift though, it's not so much about lift, it's actually just the pitch authority. It is nice to have little canards up front. You know, maybe we should just remove these intakes. I put them there more for show than for substance because, you know, it's not nice having jets on the body without some intake to feed them. But it's pretty clear that they're fairly useless as far as supplying air and most of the air is actually coming from these guys. You can see uh, here we're getting 0.15 and these are supplying 0.9. Oop, we're going a little bit high here. As usual, let's see what... Ooh, yeah, my pitch authority is negligible. You can see I'm maxing out the pitch authority here. And it's not uh, eager to turn away from that prograde vector is much less nimble than the previous one. And we've got instability. Don't worry, we could probably work our way out of that. It's just because the air is so thin and our control surfaces aren't really grabbing anything. Okay, let's have the information up. I also might want to make something that looks a lot more like the NASA Quiet SS, SST project. They've got a very advanced looking airplane for the image on that. Might as well try that out. Uh, okay, I'm having trouble pulling out of this. Uh, you can see I've maxed out the pitch there. Canards are really nice. I haven't changed... I mean, the overall size of the control surfaces here ha has not changed that much. But they're just so close to the center of mass that the uh, control authority is not great. Okay. Let's go up a little bit. And the SR-71 itself, you know, it's not that maneuverable. Not at high speeds like this. So this is not unusual. Well, Mach 4.4 and beyond it looks like. Well, let's, let's allow it to go as fast as it can just on these jets. I think we'll call it Mach 4.5. It'll probably end up there. Alright, let's ignite the ramjets. And again, the intake warning, that's engine intake, I think. Or is it engine interior? Probably engine interior. That's just weird. Well, past Mach 4.8 again. As we're accelerating, the ramjet is not increasing its thrust. We are going up a little bit. But I'm sort of surprised by that, too. Are these fictional ramjets in that they're worse than real ramjets? I mean, I'm getting that strong sense here. We are going faster than we have before, by the way. We never actually reached uh, this Mach number before. So that's good. Now here's the thing, what happens when we get maxed out on these? It didn't say anything about problems going fast in the description, did it? I mean, with the other jets, it always says, well, this can't operate past a certain Mach number. It didn't say anything about the ramjet for that. Okay, it looks like we're stopped at 4.873. Let me start going down a bit.
and maybe a bit more. I just want to see Mach 5. Come on, game. Nope, uh, they, they meant it with the intake, uh, I mean, interior heat warning. The ramjets just blew up at Mach 4.8. The SR-71 engines did not. Now, maybe it's because they're clipped in like this. So, let me move them back. Last test, I promise. Uh, let me uh, extend them back so that they're not interfering with the wing and see if that's the problem. But, this is weird. Okay. Well, I've moved the ramjets further back, and so now they are clear of the wings entirely. And to compensate, I removed the little extension that I had put on the J58s to move them further back away from the wing. Um, they'll just have to deal with that. And I also added canards because we really need to get off the runway safely. So that's our situation right now. Okay, and let's and that get rid of that and here we go again last time I promise uh, we'll we'll make larger changes later next in the next episode here we go and by larger changes I might mean like a totally new ramjet because this is peculiar now people say that they've used this just fine and so I don't know what's messing it up for me Okay, good, the canards are working. Uh, come on, canards. Yes, good. I'll try and get a mod list. Hopefully, when I post this video, I'll have the mod list in the description. And maybe that'll help you guys help me. Well, I can report that this is much nicer with the canards. Uh, with the other canards previously, I had limited the action range a bit. These I have not, that's why... Well, anyway. I'll take them as they are. They're sort of cute. Okay, we're past Mach 4. Let's try it out. We do need to be a little bit lower for the ramjets to give enough thrust to make a difference. You know, this sort of brings to question, what what is the maximum velocity for the J58s then? They're not particularly perturbed by going Mach 4.8. If we put four J58s on here, how fast would it go? Now, there's another problem, that's a lot more mass. Uh, these ramjets only have like 0.9 ton mass, whereas the J58s are something like three times that mass, so there is that problem. Well, here we go. We're almost in level flight here, and it's maxing out there. If I just put it into a little bit more of a dive, it should probably induce them to explode, if that's being honest, and it probably is. Again, uh, no interference from the wing here. Yep, they did. Alright, test complete. Uh, something's wrong with these ramjets as far as I'm concerned. I'll try and get the mod list in the video description. I bet it's a long mod list. How many mods do I have in this install? Because mm, it's meant to build you know, everything with planes that I could make compatible with RO. So, uh, 105 folders in my game data folder. That, I mean, some of them are, might, yeah, I mean, uh, some of them might contain more than one mod, some, like, I think Trigger Tech folder has both Curve Alarm Clock and Transfer Window Planner. I don't think I need Transfer Window Planner in an aerospace install. Anyway, we'll sort that out later. I'll just try and get the mod list in the video description. And, well, we've got a puzzle here, folks. We've got a puzzle here. All right. On that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy vi this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.